Meet our spirit filled preachers to teach us right from wrong. We need them old fashioned seekers who pray all night long. We need some good gospel singing. Help us go another mile And His church will triumph along And go home in a little while Cause it'll be worth it after a long child It'll be worth it after a long After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. It'll be one after all, child. It'll be one after all. After all of. After all Now when you're down In an old valley Prayer is all I can offer you But when our Lord Sends daily And look behind you and see me struggling, trying to make it along. Just lift my name up to Jesus. Let's help each other make it home. Cause it'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it. It after long After all of these trials We'll hear Jesus call It'll be worth it after all Child It'll be worth it after all After all of this planning, it'll be worth it after all. After all of this planning, it'll be worth it after all.
Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio, where we cater food for the mind and soul. Please join us this hour for uplifting music, messages, and more. And now, to the RMG Studios in Miami Gardens, Florida, and your host, the Word Master. Good afternoon, friends. Good morning. Good evening. Whenever you are listening and wherever you're listening to us from, you're tuned into Soul Cafe Studios from the Heart Podcast. I am your host, the Word Master. On today's presentation, the final episode of April Showers for 2023, as we look at the process 
Well, first of all, I want to say thank you very much, friends, loved ones, brethren, as you have been praying and supporting this endeavor throughout the month. And I want to thank you for those of you who contributed. It was truly a blessing to be able to share the presentations of Groman in the Lord this month of April as the showers of blessings came down. Today, as we go through the study, as noted, our scripture is coming from Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 24. Usually, we would read a scripture from the passage that we're going to be looking at, and today we are coming from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23, where the Bible says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We're going to grab the entire context from that which is taken a little later on as we dive in to this most important study. But at this time, before we go into our prayer, before we get into the program, I just want to appeal and just ask someone who is listening to this. In the description area, there are two campaigns that we're running simultaneously for the next couple of weeks, months, as the case is determined. Number one is the GoFundMe campaign for one of my church brethren, Alvin Johnson, and this is an ongoing campaign. If you've donated before, please continue to. He is in need of treatment for cancer, and it's not, it's not cheap. And the expenses that surround that are going to be cumulative. So whatever you can contribute towards the effort, please do. And I encourage you to don't just give once if you can, give more if you can. And I want to say in that effort, everyone who does indeed donate to the effort will receive a special thank you and something a little extra in the note that you receive after you donate it. So during the interim of our songs, please take the time to go on to the description area and to donate whatever you can. Additionally, as we enter into our next phase of this year's endeavor, so we started with April showers and we're going to go into May flowers where the growth process is supposed to take us, where all that rain is supposed to produce. And speaking of which, speaking of which, I don't know where you are listening from, but where I am, where I'm listening from, it has indeed been a very interesting experience in that The April showers that came really did a number on the greenery. I mean, just looking in the backyard, in the front yard, there's a lot of green. The April showers have done their job. The May flowers are being produced. A friend of mine, believe you when I tell you that that which the Lord is doing in the natural, he wants to do a hundredfold in the spiritual for us to be renewed day by day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and tender mercies. Thank you for your kindness, your compassion. Please, Lord, Heavenly Father, I pray that you may do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. Thank you for being a prayer here and prayer answering God. And I pray, Lord God, that you will be with the the podcast, that you will be with the presentation of today's word, and that every person who listens will be tremendously blessed, I pray. Father, continue to guide God and be with your people as we continue to endure. Until Christ comes, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I got so excited and sidetracked because of how the Lord just amazingly works in the natural as we applied the A plus showers experience that I forgot to mention at the end of what I was saying in the description area. You can find several ways to donate to the next level of the campaign. Cash App, Zelle, PayPal, GoFundMe, Buy Me a Coffee, and I think there's one or two extra other ways that you can help to foster the next level of growth as we continue to spread this message, to continue to spread this podcast presentations far and wide to the end of the earth. So yes, please, during the songs that are going to be played, please, whatever the Lord lays upon your heart, could be as little as $5 for the GoFundMe, $2 for the Buy Me a Coffee, and whatever else you can spare, cash up and sell, the Lord will multiply and use it for his glory and 
we have some big plans in the month of May. I mean, you're going to be excited by what we'll uh, what the content that you'll be hearing, not just on this platform, but throughout our ministry as it pertains to YouTube and other social media. May is a very special month to me when it comes to ministry, and this year is very, very pivotal to that. And you'll hear and you'll learn more in the intervening days of May 2023. So at this time, we'll pause and we'll head into our song break as we continue to explore the revelation that comes with knowing Jesus as a precious, precious Savior. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul.
Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. For today's show offer, please see the description. Please click on the link in the description to be taken to our YouTube channel and take a few seconds to subscribe. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Food for the mind and soul.
we're going to emphasize a lot more on the growing up experience of the believer next month. But during this presentation, we just want to see the effects of what the April showers are supposed to produce. So from Ephesians 4, 14 and 15, just to give context to what we'll be looking at today, the Bible says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slate of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So, again, we see how integral the growing up experience is to grow in grace, and it says in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and to be in truth. So, picking up from verse 17, the Bible says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feelings have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Verse 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. So, again, like I said, we're going to be emphasizing the growing up part later on in May as we continue toward our goals of ultimately by December having this whole series, the concept, just ratified in your mind the importance of Christian character perfection. But like I said, Coming up in May, there's going to be more emphasis on that. But here, the Apostle Paul makes and he divides the line. And notice he says, other Gentiles. In verse 18, we're going to clarify, but in verse 17, it says, other Gentiles. And to understand this, brethren, when, and friends, when you become a believer, when you become born again, you're no longer a Gentile in the spiritual sense. You're no longer, as verse 18 says, having the understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God. So we see that there's what is called a Gentile and what is called a believer. A Gentile, as he explains here in Ephesians and also in Romans and other places, that an alien is an unbeliever. A Gentile is an unbeliever. And so understand that it's talking about in the spiritual and when we become believers, we become part of spiritual Israel and henceforth no more Gentiles, no more foreigners, no more strangers and outside of the commonwealth of God. You see, friends, this is where and why it is so important for us to understand the reasons for the showers of blessings and the growth experience. This is the reason why we need to ask the Lord rain in a time of the latter rain. This is the reason why we need to spend time exploring the fact that as believers, we are not supposed to stay the same because our understanding will become darkened. You see, just because you say, I'm a Christian, just because you go through the motions of being baptized and you're reading your Bible and you're praying and you're going to church and so forth, that does not indicate and that does not initiate, believe you me, it's a hard saying, but it is the truth. It does not initiate a change of character. That could only happen by having a continuous, continual relationship with the Lord, by inviting Him to be in the heart and Him changing you from the inside out by His grace. But again, as it says in verse 18, those who allow themselves to believe. And again, remember, as he was talking to the Ephesians, he was talking to Ephesian believers, not Ephesians unbelievers, 
right from chapter 1 up until now, he is addressing Ephesian unbelievers. He is not sending this general letter to the Ephesian world. He is not sending it to the governors and the legislators in Ephesus. He's not sending them to the banks and the schools and the libraries and so forth, the doctor's offices and whatnot in, Eph in Ephesus. He's sending it to the church that's in Ephesus, the believers that's in Ephesus. And here he shows that you become a Gentile, you become an alien when you allow your heart to be darkened. And the way that you do that is as Jesus would give in the parable found in Matthew 13 and Mark 13 about the seed principle and the soil types, and what is allowed to grow and where. You see how important it is for us to understand these principles, dear friends? That is why we cannot just say, okay, well, I've been to church this morning, I've heard a sermon, I've sung some songs, I've read some scriptures. There has to be a living change. There has to be an actual change experience, not just seen by God, but seen by the world. Remember what the Apostle John said, that if you say we love God, right, but hate our brothers, that's, that's, you, you call yourself a liar, right? And so we want to understand that Christian character growth, Christian character perfection, the change that comes with being born again and growing up into Christ is an experience that, yes, is an internal experience, but it manifests on the outside. Just like in this month when the rains came down, and it watered the ground. That which was beneath the ground, in terms of seed and soil and minerals, came together to produce the blades that we saw pushing out of the ground. And soon enough, those blades will grow up and shoot up into full-blown trees and plants. Again, what is on the inside will be manifested on the outside. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. And again, just to clarify and emphasize, when he uses that term ignorance, he does not mean it in a purgatory sense. Purgative sense, he means it in sense that you do not understand. You do not know. Or you, it's either you voluntarily do not know you choose not to know, but he's not trying to be rude or derogatory. In other words, he's saying that, and here's the key, here's the principle, right? Jesus says in John seven seventeen, he that wills to know of the doctrine, right? He that wants to do the will of God will know of the doctrines, whether they speak of self or whether they speak of God. And he further goes on to emphasize, and listen, listen, friends, he says, Notice, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And that's actually what the Bible is going to let us know, that it is the word of God, God's manifested declaration over your life that causes you to grow. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, as I shared, it is not, there's not a lot of action that we see God doing other than he's saying, let there be. And there's not a lot of words that we see God doing rather than let there be. And that word, my friends, that word produced. He said, let it be, let there be, and it was so. That word produced. And that is what I'm saying to you today, my friends, that the word of God is going to produce in you. But it could only come because you've allowed it to do the work that it was intended to do. Remember, like I said, it's not just you reading the Word, it's, and that is the written Word. It's by you allowing the living, active Word to be part of your experience. So Christ, by His Holy Spirit, must come into you, and that must be a moment-by-moment -moment daily experience. Again, ignorance comes because we're not walking down the path that leads ultimately to that perfect day. We take for granted that as believers that there is much work for the believer to accomplish in Christ towards the ultimate goal of being mature Christians in Jesus Christ. Verse 19. 
who being past feelings have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. You see, my friends, this is what happens when the love of Christ is not allowed to be a living, active experience in our lives. We take for granted that what we learn in Scripture, what we learn from going to church, what we learn from our everyday experience are supposed to grow us up. And again, as it says, we become darkened, we become blind, we become past feelings, in other words. That message that initially grabbed you, again, going back to the seed analogy, soon, if it's not taken care of, watered, you know, nurtured, fertilized, and so forth, as we talked about in our previous presentation, if that does not become part of your experience, then, like Jesus said in the parable, the birds will quickly come and snatch it away. Jesus would say, hold fast that which you have in the book of Revelation, addressing the churches. And he says it here again through the Apostle Paul. That is why we cannot allow ourselves to become stagnant. Because, and I want it to be clear, friends, I want it to be crystal clear that stagnation does not mean that you are sitting in the same puddle of water as a Christian. It does not mean that you are just stuck in a rut and that there's no movement because when it comes to the spiritual in terms of stagnation there's not just a perpetual standstill it's going to be that you find yourself retreating going back into thinking the thoughts that you used to before you gave your life to Christ going back to the same places the same people having the same experiences and gradually sentiments in your heart will come up like this. Why do I need to do this? Why do I need to do that? If Christ is in my heart, then he will. So in other words, you, because you become a Christian, you know, a goody-goody church person, you stop cussing, you stop drinking, you stop smoking. Back in the day, you used to just smoke a little drug, you know, some smoke, smoke some weed, snort some cocaine, and, you know, engage in some illicit lifestyle. After hearing the gospel message, you gave your heart to Christ and you committed to him. But then, because you did not allow the growth and the growing experience to take hold, you started to backpedal, to backslide into those former habits. You see, my friends, the importance of continual growth because you will allow fresh water to come in, fresh water to come in. And all the mucky, miry water will be flushed out. But the channel of communication, the channel through which that pure living water comes in, must be made clear continually. Brethren, as it says in verse 20, But you have not so learned Christ. There you go, my friends. You see, beloved, understand this. Christ, as the human person, being 100% God, 100% man, came in to our world with the mind from heaven. He came in with the advantage of the divine mind that does not sin, but that divine mind was housed in a human brain. That divine mind was housed in a fallen body, and therefore that divine mind has to struggle against the ravages of humanity. For those of you who don't know where I'm headed, some of you may not readily accept it and we don't have time to really flesh out all of that. However, the body that Christ came, the body that he had was just like ours. What do I mean? He had to eat. He had to sleep. If he came with holy flesh, perfect flesh, Beloved, he would not have come through Mary's womb because every person who's come through the womb, the Bible says, notice this, notice, right? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that body that Christ took upon himself was a body that was riddled with the effects of sin. That body that was riddled with the effects of sin. 
And so therefore, when Lucifer said to Jesus, and I'm going to try to capsule this point, because, but it's very important that we understand it. When Lucifer said to Jesus in the wilderness of temptation, you see these stones over here? Turn them into bread and eat. It wasn't a temptation because the Bible says it was a temptation and couldn't find any other words because it was a futile attempt to do so. In other words, it was pointless to try to tempt Jesus. If Jesus could not be tempted, right? Then, and by tempted I mean, as it says in James chapter 1, drawn away of its own lust. In other words, what lust am I talking about? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Again, those things that's housed in our mortality. You and I, when we get hungry and there's no food in the refrigerator, as I mentioned in previous messages, it's either of two things we do. Because we worked and we have money to spend to buy food, we go to the corner store and pick up a little something. But if we don't have that means, then we turn to alternative means. We rob a bank or we go into the, the store and rob it because we're hungry. But if we allowed the mind that Christ came to give us in us and have it be transplanted in and having the old mind transplanted out, then here's the thing. You will be tempted to the severest to go and get that food. You'll watch the cameras. You'll make sure that and this is you saying to yourself, you watch the cameras, you'll make sure that there's nobody else around to see you take this or take that. And that's a temptation. I'm so hungry. I could, right? But then that spiritual mind kicks in where it goes to war against the flesh. But my child, it is written, David saying to you, that you are young and now you're old, yet have not you seen the righteous forsaken. When have you ever seen me abandon you because I did not know how to provide for you? And if we allow, my friends, if we allow the Spirit of the Lord to win out in the end rather than our desires for food, we are growing. We are growing. That first victory points to another victory. Where did we see that manifested? As it says here in Ephesians 4.20, but you have not so learned Christ. Christ, because he had the scriptures, as it says, hidden in his heart. He quickly responded without hesitation to Lucifer. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds of the mouth of God. That is how man ought to live, my friends. He's quoting from the Old Testament. Again, it is written. And we need to understand these principles as outlined in that passage. Because, you see, my friends, it will come to the place and it will come to the point that you will compromise because you see no other way out. The rent is high and your income is low and you'll compromise. Okay, well, I could miss church this week because I need some bills paid. I could cut a little corner because I could be unscrupulous in my business dealings because and on and on and on. But you have not so learned Christ, my friends. In everything I just said, beloved, Christ gave us the model. Christ gave us the model. And if we look to Jesus, if we learn of Jesus, then guess what? He'll make us more than just conquerors, brethren. Because as we continue this grace training experience, we'll know and understand truly that Everything that we have, everything that we are, everything that we'll ever need comes because of a spoken word from the living word. Verse 21 says, If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus 22, this is what you do, friends. This is what you do. And this verse, this passage of scripture, is actually at the heart. It's actually at the heart of the message for today that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust turn with me to Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 
3, the Bible says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. So, you see, my friends, the born-again experience is not an experience where you allow your stagnant nature to dominate, where you find yourself at a standstill and do not desire growth, do not desire a rich, active experience where you want to have your relationship with Jesus Christ go to an advanced level. Peter's letter talks about that, and we'll look at that in the final half hour as we wind down the program. But notice Colossians 3. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. So, therefore, therefore, if the eye is constantly kept fixed on Jesus, right, then the growth process will be advancing upward. As the sun of righteousness shines into your heart, those branches will rise higher and still higher. Those roots will go deeper and deeper. There's growth, there's no stagnation, there's no rot. Everything is fresh and fertile because as it says in Psalms 1, you are found by the rivers of waters and your leaves are constantly green. You are evergreen. And here's the reason why. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. In Galatians 2.20, the Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. And here's a sobering truth, my friends. When you become born again, you no longer exist. And in fact, it's an acknowledgement that you no longer exist because you no longer existed for some 2,000 years now. What do I mean? What do I mean? I mean that when Christ went to the grave, he took Adam's fallen humanity, the fallen humanity that he came into, and he sent it to the second death. And when he arose victoriously from the grave early Sunday morning, and by the way, that was right after sunset, Sabbath, just to give you a point of clarity. He arose with a glorified humanity. He arose with a glorified humanity. And what does that consist of for you and I right now? One day we will have that glorified humanity. But for right now, we have what Christ had when he came to earth. We have what Christ had when he came to earth. His mind, his perfect mind, housed in our corrupt vessel. And it is left up to us. It's left up to us to allow him to continue to grow us up into his likeness after his image. Brethren, you no longer exist in terms of Adam's humanity. Yes, biologically, structurally, it's the case because all of us come into this biological humanity the same, or else there will be no need for the scriptures to tell us you must be born again because all will come in born again. But functionally, functionally, my friends, you no longer exist. You no longer exist. The you that is to be seen is Christ. And if you are somewhere walking around and causing and wreaking havoc, that means that you are a zombie. That means that you are the undead. That means that you are a ghost, as the people would clarify what a ghost is. But you're not some person that's come back from the grave that's haunting people. You are a new creature in Jesus Christ. You are a new sort of humanity. And if we continue to be faithful to the growth experience where the Lord is leading, then we will experience that glorification. First, because of Calvary, we have that justification experience. Also because of Calvary, we have the sanctification experience. But because, but because of that Sunday morning, we will have the glorification experience soon and very soon 
if we are found faithful. Friend of mine, friend of mine, you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless, not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 24 of Ephesians chapter 24. Let's head back there. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24 tells us, 23 and 24 tells us, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Friends, that's what the April showers are designed to produce. That is why when you pray for the latter rain in a time of the latter rain, that just like in the natural, so in the spiritual, that which the Lord has been working on will be manifested in you, and that which is worked in will be worked out in rich experiences. When we come back from our song break, we are going to explore Peter's growth experience, and we're going to see, beloved, we're going to see as we start to transition into May and the experiences of Mayflowers, we are going to see how important it is to grow up into Christ. Stay tuned. You are listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul.
You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. For today's show offer, please see the description. Please click on the link in the description to be taken to our YouTube channel. And take please a few take seconds, a few to, seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. Friend of mine, I want to tell you something as we start to wind down on today's presentation. 
You see, if what we're talking about could be attained by you listening to a podcast, by you watching a YouTube channel, by you listening to a sermon, and then that's it. In other words, salvation by osmosis. Then you wouldn't have all the different scriptures that we've been discussing today. But the word of God is clear that growth must happen. Change must happen. A new experience must begin. Because something needs to be manifested that you are a child of God. Again, God knows it. The angels know it. God's universe of beings know it. But the Bible is clear that by these things that you manifest in the external, others will know that you are Christ's disciple. He says, let your light so shine that others see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You see, my friends, the manifestation of what we're talking about here is the salvation of souls. What we're discussing is so that not just you and I could make it into God's kingdom, but other persons who may have serious doubts about what it is to be a believer. They are struggling with past hurts. They are going through different things that they are trying to work out on their own, whether it's overcoming addiction or to whatever, abstain from X, Y, Z, A, B, C. But they don't see any examples and they, they don't believe that it is doable. The only way that's going to be manifested, beloved, is if they see Christ actively being an agent in and through you. And so when we talk about these things, friends, again, understand that I could easily say to a person, hey, watch this YouTube video, listen to this podcast, and you'll change. But no, my friends, no. Again, it's not salvation by osmosis. It's transformation through assimilation. It is transformation through assimilation. And Christ must come in and do the work in us. Christ must come in and have the change worked out. Christ has to be the author and the finisher of our work. It is God, the Bible says, and Christ is God, who is the author and the finisher, who does the will and does the work in. Again, beloved, make no mistakes. There has to be a full surrender of the heart and mind to God, or this will not be possible. As we get ready to wind down. I want to go back to a song and then after that song we'll have our final segment for today looking at Peter's letter as found in Second Peter chapter 1 verses 2 up until 11. So Second Peter chapter 1 2 through 11 after we come back from our song break. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Food for the mind and soul. Sunshine, bless the sunshine, bring 
Next month, as we launch our Mayflower's emphasis, we'll come back to this theme, this song. In Second Peter chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Again, that is why we are looking at this topic, so that that grace experience may continually be multiplied to us. And how? Through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that knowledge is not intellectual. Again, like I said, it's not found just by merely reading your Bible, by merely watching a YouTube video, listening to a podcast. It is through an intimate relationship with God. It's like Jesus said in John 14, 23, if a man loves me, then we will come into him. As it says in Ephesians 5, 25, the bride of Christ must be sanctified, must be spotless, must be without blemish. It's that type of experience that we're talking about when we talk about knowledge of God. It is oneness with him, intimacy with our maker. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So in other words, my friends, in other words, what we just heard just now is that everything that you and I need for our salvation has been given to us in Jesus Christ our Lord through the merits of the cross. And here is where our April shower experience comes in. Because just as in nature, a seed, friends, a seed has everything in it necessary for its growth processes. In other words, just like you and I at that embryonic stage, had everything needed for us to grow. Just as you and I had everything at that seed stage, as it were, the same thing happens in nature in terms of the plant life. That seed has, if it's a mango tree, that thing, it has within it the DNA to produce the green leaves. It has in it the genetic material to produce the sweetness and the color of the fruit, the shape and texture and so forth. All of it is there. All of it is dear, friends. But here goes, here goes. But under the right condition, that seed is allowed to mature. So in other words, it must receive showers of rain. It must be watered. It must be fertilized. It must be continually receiving air and sunlight. It must continue to receive these elements. But what's already in it, it's not the sun that comes down and makes the mango sweeter. It is not the ear and the soil that makes the mango sweeter. That sweetness has already built, been built in to its genetic makeup. So you and I, beloved, you and I, as Christians, being born again, have what is necessary for our salvation. Every person who is born again from Adam all the way right down who have received Christ as their personal Savior from sin 
at whatever stage they were to pass off this earth, would have been accounted worthy of heaven if they continued to have Christ resident in the heart. And so therefore, unlike you and I in 2023 and beyond, who need to know certain truths to advance to a higher level of Christian experience, at whatever stage they passed from life to death, they are assured of salvation, we are assured of salvation. But you and I, who have passed from death unto life, have some work to do, friends, as we continue to receive the light. We grow according to the light. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. And verse 4 is key and critical. In just like verse 23 of Ephesians 4 is critical, so too is Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 4. And every Christian ought to know this verse, not just intellectually, but as a living, active experience, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. So we're starting to see that even though, like I said, even though that all things have been given unto us, those things that have been given unto us, now combining with other external influence and stimuli, will grow up and be made up into that tree of righteousness that the Lord himself has planted. Notice what the Word of God says, and beside this, meaning that there's more to be done, that there's further work to be done in the believer. As long as you have life in you, there must be continual growth. And that, my friend, is why Satan would have us distracted. That is why Satan would have us constantly being diverted to other endeavors rather than the sanctification work that Christ has begun in us. Because there's additional work that will lead to multiplication, as we saw in verse 2. There's addition that leads to multiplication. Satan knows this, his demons know this, and that is why they're trying to do a number on us as believers, so that we do not engage in this all-important work. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Again, for those of you who are familiar with this, this is, as Christians call it, Peter's ladder. And this is the ascent that he gives us. Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Now, my friends, understand that Paul, sorry, the Apostle Peter, so accustomed to reading from Paul, the Apostle Peter here is not, as I often say, instituting a program of works-oriented religion. So understand that you, my friends, you, yourself are not doing the work of addition. You're allowing the Holy Spirit to do that in you. The grace training that goes along with what he talks about in other passages, like enduring when you're tried, when you're tempted, when you're puppeted, you're adding virtue to your faith experience. You're adding knowledge to your virtue experience. And that knowledge, my friends, again, it's not information, it's experience, it's intimacy with your maker. And to knowledge, temperance, moderation in all things and to temperance patience again one of the things that we were talking about in the last hour was how christ is the living embodiment of what we're talking about today and so the bible says that yet he were as a son the bible says though he were a son he had to learn to endure and by that learning he learned patience he endured continually in his humanity. He continued to grow spiritually to the point where, again, as I mentioned, one of my pastors mentioned prior, which I love the statement, at 13, at 12, even knowing that Christ was the Son of God, from he learned that in the temple, he was not ready for Calvary. There had to be more. 
that went on, my friends. And he did that, my friends. He endured all of that so that he could give you and I that experience of growth and learning patience and learning to be at peace though we are tossed about by the assaults of so-called friends and loved ones. And to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness. So you see, my friends, the ladder is climbing, it's climbing. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you, again, see, they are in you and they abound in you. It says, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's not my words, my friends. Like I said, we're going to flesh out these thoughts as we enter into the month of May. But as we just brought to surface, I hope that you understand, my friends. I hope that you understand that this experience is an experience that if you have not undertaken as a believer, if no one told you, if no one mentioned it to you, that you must, you must, my friends, surrender to the Spirit so that He could have His way with you. If no one said to you that spending hours and hours and hours just watching movies on YouTube that do not feed your spirit is wrong. If no one told you that eating unhealthy is wrong. If no one told you, if no one told you that just sipping on a little alcohol is wrong, smoking one joint is wrong, then you have not so learned Christ. Because you see, my friends, these activities are activities of the former life. And I promise you, every true child of God will seek to do those things that please Him. Again, we understand the call and we understand the sacrifice of Calvary and therefore we want to make sure that we do not displease the one who created us and the one who recreated us, who regenerated himself on the inside of us and he's now calling us to allow him to live soberly, righteously and as we just saw just now, godly in this present wicked world. Again it says, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's all about the growth experience of the believer. It's not about you staying stagnant. Believe you, my friend. Believe you me. When you have so learned Christ and begin to follow him, when you have allowed him to manifest himself in you, you begin to see the transformation and very much so others will see the transformation in you and want to come along and be part of this glorious Christian band. But he that lacketh these things is blind. Again, talking about those who are in that stagnant experience that we talked about in the last hour and cannot see afar off, again, the aliens, and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. See, friends, the Apostle Peter is hitting home to the point that we're talking about today. The April shower experience, my friends, is to produce growth in the believer. And that is why we need to pray, Lord, send down the rain. Send down the rain. Send down the gospel rain. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall, not, ye shall never fail. Verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, as I close out, you see here again that tied into the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, is your character growth and perfection. The Bible says that when you have passed from the blade 
to the ear, to the full coin in the ear, then immediately Christ will come. And this is the work that's holding up the church. The Bible tells us clearly, again, Peter himself here tells us that we need to not only look for, but hasten the coming of the Lord. Again, it is tied into God in Christ, working out his good and perfect will in you. My beloved, I trust and pray that as we continue to do that which the Lord requires of us, that after we have done all the things that we need to do in this laboring process, that we will truly realize that it would have been worth it after all. We need our spirit filled preacher to teach us right from wrong. We need them old fashioned seekers who pray all night long. We need some good gospel singing to help us go another mile. And his church will triumph. Go home in a little while. Cause it'll be worth to have the wrong child. It'll be worth it after long. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. After all of this planning, it'll be worth it after all. Now when you're down in an old valley, prayer is all. I can offer you But when our Lord sends deliverance And He strengthens you When you get up on God's mountain And look behind you And see me struggling Trying to make it along just lift my name up to Jesus Let's help each other make it home Cause it'll be worth it after all Child, it'll be worth it after long After all of these trials Heavenly Father, truly, truly, Lord God, after all the years that we've been through climbing Peter's ladder of progress towards our eternal inhabitant, inheritance, Lord God, I pray, Father, 
that the sacrifices that we've made, the separation from loved ones, the separations from even churches and congregations that were not teaching us present truth, O oh Lord God, I pray, Father, that we would have seen that it would have been worth it after all. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness and your mercy towards us, dear Father. Thank you, Lord God, for your abundant kindness, Lord God, towards us. Thank you for teaching us that which we did not know on our own and could never know on our own, Lord Jesus. After all of this climbing, Lord, help us to see that it was truly worth it after all. Father, as we wind down today's program, I just want to commit every word spoken into your care and keeping and trust, O Lord God, that persons listening today will not just take my word for it, but go back into the scriptures and study out for themselves and to develop a relationship with you. Heavenly Father, I know as I always say, dear Lord God, that these things, these principles are not easy, especially when it comes against a world that wants to go contrary and wants, to, wants us as believers to go contrary. They call us squares and worse types of names. Lord God, and as believers, we cannot retaliate. We cannot call them names back. And we have to go through different challenges, face people that are contrary to us and experiences that are contrary to us. And we have to do the things the right way while others get to walk down the smooth, broad way and have life seemingly so easy. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll teach us that after all of this climbing, after all the tears and the prayers, after all the trials and tribulations, that it would have been worth it after all. Dismiss us, Lord God, with your blessings as we continue this grace journey, this grace training for the rest of our lives. Thank you, God, for being a prayer here and prayer answering God. We pray in the mighty, majestic name of Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. I want to thank you, my friends, for joining me today on this final April Showers presentation for 2023. Next month, we'll begin that Mayflower series, starting with the all-important passages that we looked at today here in Second Peter chapter 1, and we'll spend more time going over them in a three-hour presentation, I believe either Monday or Tuesday, and I'll let you know following the presentation or sometime during our Wellness Wednesday presentation. So it, it'll be either Monday or Tuesday, starting May 1st or May 2nd. Look forward to have you join us for those three-hour live messages. Friend of mine, as we wind down, as we close out, actually, I want to remind you about the information in the description area. First of all, the GoFundMe campaign is right there, right below where it says today's show offer. And of course, also following that, where it says how you can contribute to this channel, how you can help us to be able to share these messages and produce more messages, better equipment, more professional instruments and so forth that's needed to get these messages out to the masses. By God's grace and prayerfully, I would solicit, whether it's, like I said, $2, $5, or whatever the Lord places upon your heart, trust you me when I tell you, as the Bible says, it is much better to give than to receive because the blessings that you get outweigh the blessings that I get. Trust you me when I tell you that the persons who come up to you in the kingdom somehow, again, like I said, I don't know how, will have super no supernatural knowledge that because you gave a dollar, that day that there was an appeal, that they heard a message and that they gave their lives to the Lord and that they're in the kingdom because you took time to give to the Lord. And like I said, for those of you always who give, you know, my friends, you are being an active 
participant in this ministry. Yes, passively with your words, but very active in doing the will of the Lord, and the Lord will bless you abundantly. So I want to encourage you to whatever the Lord places upon your heart to give. And again, don't let that be diminished by the appeal for the GoFundMe for my church brother Alvin as he needs the funds to defray the cost of the treatment that he'll receive for the cancer. Don't, con don't stop praying for him. Don't stop praying for this ministry. And if he can't do anything financially on both ends, guess what? Your prayers can do what your funds can never do. Trust you me. Believe that. See you tomorrow for our Wellness Wednesday presentation. Don't know what we'll be talking about, but for those of you who follow me on social media, you will know soon. May God bless you abundantly. See you, those of you who will be on for Bible study, for a Tuesday evening Bible study. May God bless you abundantly, everyone. And until this is the Word Master, wishing you a blessed, blessed day. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.org.